and hello again to all the people listening on the recording. Um, I'd love if you guys would want to open the discussion here and just talk to me a little bit about where you're at with mushrooms. Um, if you, you know, if you do microdose, you can say that. If you do take psilocybin and go on journeys, you can say that. If you take some sort of reishi or cordyceps or whatever you're doing with mushrooms, maybe you're just looking at them or picking them. I don't know, but let's just go around and speak a little bit where we're at with them and why we want to learn more about them. So let's see. I want to start with David. Are you there? Hi, Jenny. Can you Hi. hear me? Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I have um, no experience whatsoever with mushrooms. I was just intrigued by your email um, with their ability to help with uh, mental mental illnesses. So mostly anxiety. Anxiety. Okay. Good. We're gonna yeah. see that absolutely today. Beautiful. So good. Glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, okay, two of these gals on here are my clients, so let's start with Deza, if she can talk. If not, you can put in the chat, babe. Can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're faint, but we can hear you. Okay, hi. Um, so my experience with mushrooms, <clears throat> I grew up picking morel mushrooms in Montana because there's lots of forest fires and morels pop up after forest fires. So that was always a fun part of my childhood. Wow. Um, and then I dabbled with psilocybin um, this winter. I was using, I was microdosing for the first time, which was a really wild, awesome ride. Okay. Um, wild, not wild in like the, like wild. It was just, it <laughs> definitely improved my um, overall mental state um, during awesome. like the beginning of COVID and then also I live in Alaska, so it's very dark and gloomy in the winter. Um, and then I also recently, actually because of Jenny, started uh, using mushrooms in coffee and tea. So I, I started using Four Sigmatic, mm -hmm. um, the company, and they make this really awesome powder that you can put in anything, like smoothies or water or coffee, tea, whatever. <clears throat> So I've been using that pretty frequently for the last two months. Um, but I want to know more. Oh, I also just recently bought one of the where you can grow oyster mushrooms in a box. <laughs> and so they're getting really big right now. And I'm really excited to harvest them and eat them and then try out um, some other kinds of mushrooms that you can grow at home. I think that's such a cool idea. And yeah, so that's my experience with mushrooms. Awesome. I love that, Deza. Thank you for sharing. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's go to Donnie. Hi, dear. Can you talk? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so I basically use mushrooms like um, when I'm out to, you know, see nature or feel more um, creative, um, to feel more social. Um, it helps me to release a lot of stress and it, it brings me into a different um, set, set of mind when I'm like really stressed and worried about a lot of, a lot of stuff in my life. Um, so I'm basically, I just wanna, you know, pick your brain a little bit more about mushrooms and like see what else can I learn from you. Cool. And that's, you're talking about psilocybin, correct? Like magic mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing. So glad you're here. Jill, where are you at with your mushroom consumption? <laughs> oh, I'm a nerd. So like, I've been on mushroom more with the micro society, but like I'm always out and about when I'm hiking, Ooh, trying to identify the mushrooms that I know. I eat them as many different ways as I can. Uh, yeah, like I like all mushrooms. Um, and I've been taking uh, tincture 
on and off, like just for overall health and lion's mane tincture um, mm -hmm. that I, that's made locally. Um, Jenny now knows him, but yes, that's the one. So I've been taking tinctures for a while now and um, yeah, I've really only done psilocybin like a handful of times. I did just acquire some to try microdosing, I would balance some. Uh, I haven't really started with that, but just because I, I kind of tend to have depressive points. So um, seeing if that kind of helps. But yeah, I love all things mushroom. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm going to touch on pretty much everything. We don't have, we have a little, we have, you know, within the hour, I'm going to touch in, touch on a, a lot of the stuff that everyone brought up. David started with anxiety. Um, Des is growing her own mushrooms. I want to speak to that too, because the cool part about mushrooms is that we can grow them in our house. It's not like you have to start some garden or anything like you can literally buy mushrooms and grow them in your house um, with a kit which we can talk about at the end so um danny does a jill david david you're familiar with ayurveda yeah perfect okay yeah, so I want to start. I want to start with that um, as the beginning because I am an Ayurvedic practitioner, and so I want to start with the fact that we all have different bodies, and in Chinese medicine and in Ayurvedic medicine, we we look at the body and we say you are a unique individual. There is no one the same as you, and so we have to take the same approach with mushrooms, right? And specifically in Ayurveda, mushrooms are actually looked down upon. They're looked at rajasic, which is kind of like this, this morbid kind of dark, deathly um, energy. Back in India, 5,000 years ago, they would see mushrooms and they would be like, oh, no, no, don't eat that. That's, you don't know what that is. It's growing off poop or it's, it looks funny. It's fungus. Like you might eat that and it could give you some sort of change your brain or, you know, get you sick. And so they have this kind of different um, viewpoint versus Chinese medicine, where the mushrooms were growing abundantly, reishi and chaga and cordyceps. I mean, these are, these are in the texts of Chinese medicine in the soups that they made. And, the, you know, the it, it, reishi is like an ancient sage tea, like reishi is the sages, the sage juice. <laughs> from originated from China, right? So we see a lot of mushrooms in Chinese medicine text, and we don't see a lot. We don't see any in Ayurveda. The only thing we can go back to with Ayurveda that I've found is a drink called Soma, which is a drink that they said the ancient sages drank in India that gave them sort of psychedelic euphoric effects. So we really don't see much information about mushrooms in Ayurveda, except for the fact that they're rajasic. And that is kind of like this deathly nature, this fast moving bad energy. So what do we do <laughs> when you like mushrooms and you know they're freaking good for you and they're, they're helping people in all these crazy areas. And the one I wanna to speak to the most today is mental health. So as an Ayurvedic practitioner, I have learned in the past year to move past my ego and break through the fact that I can be whoever I want to be and that I want to incorporate mushrooms into my practice and speak about them, even though um, they're not even in the Vedic texts. So um, I've researched a lot about this and found some dual Ayurvedic practitioners and in TCM practitioners. There's a, there's a few people out there who are Ayurvedic practitioners and acupuncturists. And I have researched them heavily and listened to their podcasts and listened to their videos and read about this. And how can we still use the doshas and the constitutions for mushrooms? Because at this point, mushrooms are trendy right now. They're all over the shelves when you go in sprouts, you, when you go in the food store. 
everybody's talking about mushrooms and it's like, oh, let me just check mark the box. Let me take my, oh, let me pop back my mushroom supplements so I can have a good day. And I don't even know why I'm taking them. So I want to break that down as to the fact that that's not <laughs> what we want to do with these amazing fruiting bodies. Um, so let's, I'm going to bring up a little bit. Yeah, Deza, I will, after this call, which I know there's going to be some questions, I'm going to, I'm going to send you guys some information about the people and the research that I've been doing about SOMA. Um, I'm going to write that down because you'll want to, you'll want, you might want to be interested in that. Um, SOMA and then the TCM Ayurvedic practitioners. Um, you're welcome. So, so in Ayurveda, right, we have, I'm going to sh share my screen real quick with you guys, if I can. Oops. Here we go. Okay. So, Ayurveda, mushrooms, and mental health. So first of all, let's, before I get into Ayurveda even more, but what is mycelium, right? You've heard about mycelium. The mycelium is the network of the mushroom, okay? So the mycelium, when we're walking on the ground, there's this internet <laughs> underneath our feet that connects all the trees, it, it, all the plants, they their nutrients are connected and go, thriving through this internet we call mycelium. And so whether you like it or not, fungus is everywhere. Literally, it's holding this planet together. And so we have to know that that's the mycelium underneath. And then on top, we have the fruiting bodies, which is, you know, the, the pretty mushroom or the, the reishi cap or the, you know, the turkey tail toadstool that you see, these really beautiful um, thin like turkey tail mushrooms. They're so beautiful. And what's in those fruiting bodies is called beta glucans. And these are proteins that have all the good stuff in it, right? So when we harvest um, mushroom, we harvest the fruiting body. Um, and then the alpha glucans are in the mycelium. So we, the mycelium holds everything together and then the fruiting bodies, it's kind of like a tree, right? It's like a tree with the roots and then we get the fruit. So it's, it's the same thing with a mushroom. And so these are our allies, right? These are our allies, our, 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 our fungus allies, and we have to be friends with them. So I just want to explain like the, the mushroom in general. So you understand like what you're taking when you're taking a microdose or a psilocybin magic mushroom, you're eating the stem and the fruiting body, which both have the medicine in it and the beta glucons, which is what does all the magic. So I know there's a lot of text, but you, I know it's kind of making my eyes hurt just looking at it. <laughs> but so in Ayurveda, I said that mushrooms are tamasic or rajasic. But the cool part about Ayurveda is that when we eat something, the first thing that starts the digestion is on the tongue. So when we put the microdose on our tongue or we put the lion's mane that we you know, or the oyster mushroom on our tongue, we actually start digesting it there and then we digest it and then we have a post-digestive effect and that's like where we get the benefits. The post-digestive effect is where the nutrients have breaking, broken down. So it's very important to take an Ayurvedic outlook onto mushrooms is that we want the mushrooms to touch our tongue. That's why when you take these supplements and Des, I, I know I recommended Four Sigmatic I take four sigmatic as well. Um, but sometimes when we take them in a capsule form, we lose this, we lose this beautiful part of digestion with the mushrooms. So if you do take your mushrooms in a capsule, um, you could potentially take a little bit out of the capsule and put it on your tongue just a little bit and then close the capsule back up and then swallow it. So you're actually getting the, the medicine on your tongue and you really digest it better and you're going to get a better 
effect because I'm coming back to, uh, you know, popping pills in your mouth just because you need to take your supplements and your check mark that, you know, did that. Um, we lose a lot of the, the devotion. We lose a lot of the connection to the plant in that, in that consumption, like in that quick consumption practice. So these, you know, mushrooms are really special. They're just as special as kale, to be honest. <laughs> We're, all these plants and mushrooms are equal. But when it comes to these, how powerful these are, um, I think it's really important to come back to uh, the practice of consuming it and making it spiritual. So in the doshas, um, Danny, do you, have I ever done a reading for you? I don't know if you're on there, but, and then uh, Mark, do you know your dosha? Ooh. Or David, sorry, David, do you know your dosha? Um, you did do a reading for me uh, several years ago, but I do not remember actually. So sorry about that. David, do you live in Hillcrest? Yes. Oh my God. On fourth. Wow. Okay. It's all coming back to me now. It's been years. Yeah, that's okay. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thank what, you. What, um, what was your reading? Do you remember what we did? We came up with? Uh, I don't actually. No, sorry. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So no reading for you. Danny needs a reading. Okay. So, um, okay. I'm going to go back to screen share here. <laughs> Sorry about this, you guys. Just get, getting uh, familiar here with everything. Okay. So you can either be Vata, Bitta, or Kapha. And that, that de decides how you're going to take your mushrooms, basically. So the mushrooms are, you know, they have different properties, right? We take them differently is basically what screen sharing is. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see my screen? You can see it, but I don't think it's, um, it's, a, it's a, an iCloud screen. Uno momento. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. So it depends on your dosha depends on how you're going to consume the mushrooms. So here I say we might need to add an anupan. In Ayurveda, we add an anupan to medicine. And on a pond is a transfer agent. It's a transferring agent. So we might want to take um, our mushroom as a tea. We might want to drink it in, a wa in, in water, or maybe we want to drink it in almond milk, or maybe we want to add some ghee to the mushrooms. So sometimes we might need to add a transferring agent to the mushrooms so they digest better. So with kapha, um, this person has a lot of earth element. So they can they can get like a a bigger uh, a bigger hit of the mushrooms, right? They can take more. They can take like a more a bigger dosage. They can do it twice a day. And they can add ginger. They want to make it pungent. So that could be the onapon is like a slice of ginger. So um, you know we can we can think about this, but in the way we are. So pitta, which is the fire element, which Danny. Um, you are pizza, you're pizza vata. Um, but this is something like you might want to make drink it as a tea. That would be better for you. Um, you could also do this a few times a day when you're taking the mushrooms. Vata can add sweetness like fruit juice, licorice, smaller dose, right? They don't need as much because the vatas are so sensitive. They need a smaller dose and more frequently every couple of hours. So they're just like, they're so sensitive that they need to be you know, a big dose can be really like, could be a really bad idea for them. So 
Um, Jill mentioned something about, you know, taking big doses of mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms, and she gets kind of whacked out. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe she just needs, she needs a microdose. <laughs> So we want to be mindful of the amount that we're taking with mushrooms. And it doesn't just matter with psilocybin, but I'm gonna really I'm gonna talk about the other mushrooms today. Um, I feel like microdosing can be um, a whole nother conversation that I don't have time for an hour. So I'm gonna speak more about mental health and mushrooms. Does anybody have any questions about this and like how I, I'm relating mushrooms to Ayurveda? how it's kind of hard, but you can do it. I do not. Cool. Okay. That makes sense. Good. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So if any of this doesn't make sense, um, let me know. Let's see. Okay. So mushrooms are adaptogens. What is an adaptogen? An adaptogen adapts with you. So when you take an, an adaptogens, again, very trendy, right? People are just taking adaptogens like, oh, it's, it's trendy. Let's take some, you know, maca powder, whatever. Um, adaptogens are great because they're trendy for a good reason, because they adapt with you. If you're tired, they're going to give you energy. If you're sped up and, and have anxiety, they're going to calm you down. So they're going to work with you, which is incredible to me blows my mind that plants can literally work with your chemistry and know what you need they're like the spirit these spirits that you take in and they're like okay i know i see you let's give you what you need right now and that's what adaptogens are so ashwagandha i'm, sh I'm sure some of you have heard of this very popular one mushrooms ginseng maca holy basil these are just like that's just a few um, to be honest, a lot of the adapt the big adaptogens are are derived from India. They're Ayurvedic herbs, um, which I will probably do uh, a, a workshop on that in general. Just Ayurvedic herbs coming soon. But um, you know, I say here, like I'm, I'm coming back to this. There's no shotgun method with these things. It's not just two pills twice a day. You know, check mark like. These herbs are, are, are powerful, beautiful plants, and we have to honor them. You know, it's really important to even just look at your supplements. Where did they come from? How far did they travel to get on your shelf? What is the growing conditions like? You know, there's just so many things to really look at when you take medicine. So, um, again, whole nother conversation, but mushrooms are adaptogens. So let's move forward. What is this mushroom? Does anybody know? No idea. Oh, we've got another person. Okay. Okay. So this is the beautiful reishi mushroom. And here it's being grown in a grow room. So you can see um, these plastic bags here. These are probably kits here. They have probably have a wall kit here going on. Um, and it's just so beautiful, this mushroom. I have uh, some reishi growing now. I have some lion's mane growing, growing now at my home. And I'm so excited for these like, this like rainbow of browns to come out. Um, so this mushroom specifically is, whoop, there's lion's mane, reishi. Again, I'm going to bring back this, the ancient reishi. Okay, so R-E-I-S-H-I, -S that's the mushroom. A reishi, R-I-S-H-I, -I, that's an ancient, that's a sage of India. So I think that's cool because reishi is this mushroom that bring, can bring you into deep, um, deep meditation can bring you to the state of enlightenment. Um, it's the most popular mushroom out of all the ones I'm going to be talking about today. So reishi is the mushroom of immortality or the spirit mushroom. So right now I'm, I'm creating a, a tea blend with when my reishi is ready, I'm going to do reishi and go to cola, which go to cola is an Ayurvedic herb 
that brings you into a deep state of meditation. So how beautiful would it be if you had like a Rishi go-to cola meditation herbal blend tea that you drank before you meditated? <sighs> Making me like freak out just thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so, so we have to honor how special this mushroom is. Um, it's known as, known as Ling Zi in TCM, that's traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory, very powerful anti-inflammatory. So for those of you with high pitta, with high fire, with high inflammation of the gut, um, reishi is very important. Um, as I go through the mushrooms, I want you to know that combining these mushrooms is very beneficial. Um, because they all are so powerful. They love to work together. So there's no like, oh, I'm just going to take Rishi. Like, no, you, sh you can combine them. It'd be great to combine them. Um, so I'll go over some of the things here because that I think were important just to touch on. Um, Rishi really helps with sleeping. Um, you could drink, again, meditate and drink some Rishi tea before bed. Um, seasonal allergies. Um, I know someone who has allergies right now, and I'm like, why am I not calling them, telling them about reishi? Um, it's an amazing antidepressant, great for cancer patients, immune booster, anti-ager, antioxidant, right? So it's just got like all these special, all this special stuff going on. Nice relationship with the psyche. So that kind of comes back to meditation, being in this calm, content, like easygoing state you know, um, it's really, and, and I say it's like the most important one today because it's really great for a lot of stuff. Um, but when I think of Rishi, I just think of this like beautiful mushroom that should be taken to really feel connected and calm and clear. And if you do take psilocybin, um, if you do take micro doses, um, Again, you can combine your psilocybin with the reishi. How cool would that be? Um, and kind of like an herbal blend with different mushrooms. Um, do we have any questions about reishi? No. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, this one's Lion's Mane. Um, somebody's on the call, Fiona, hi. Um, Fiona is a chef and she just sent me a picture the other day of a bunch of Lion's Mane tacos. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. Sounds so awesome. Lion's Mane tacos that she made. Um, I'd love to hear more about the Lion's Mane tacos. And Whoops, I wanna go back to this. Oh, sorry guys, you don't, you know where I'm going next. Um, okay, so I also have Lion's Mane kit. Um, let's see, who's in San Diego? Everyone except Deza. Um, so you can get these kits. Um, they're at the farmer's markets now. Um, I don't know about the Hillcrest one, David, but you can get these kits. Um, and literally all you have to do is just poke a hole in the kit and spray bottle it three times a day. And then you start growing mushrooms. <laughs> it's, it's really easy. It's crazy how easy it is. Um, so just imagine if you had something like this growing on your kitchen counter. <laughs> it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and once you find out the benefits of it, it's even better. <laughs> So this is the, you know, this one I've been doing so much, re uh, so much Rishi, so much uh, research on specifically to Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Um, I don't know if any of you have grandmas or older elderly people in your life. This is something that is kind of, you know, could be scary to bring up to you know your your elderly friend or grandma or mom or dad or whatever and start incorporating this into their life um i know that my partner um we wanted to start giving 
um, his grandma lion's mane and the doctor said no, which I think is hilarious, but, and she's on a bunch of different prescription medica medications, but what's so cool about lion's mane is that it is the ultimate brain tonic. So it promotes the nerve growth. So your, your, your nerve endings, as you get older, they start to fall off and like fade away and basically start dying and disintegrating. And so what lion's mane does is it keeps your nerves alive. It keeps them, um, it keeps, it, it, it promotes regeneration. It promotes protection. It, 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 rep it can even repair a nerve injury. Um, so if you have some sort of nervous system injury or um, disease or illness, it can actually start repairing that and getting you back to a normal state. So um, yes, the specific part about lion's mane that it has a special compound in it that stimulates the growth of brain cells and protects them from damage caused by Alzheimer's degrees, disease and dementia. So um, if you meet people who have, if you start after this, after this workshop, start looking up uh, like news and stories on lion's mane and Alzheimer's and dementia or getting to know people who are interested in mushrooms and using mushrooms. And I bet you'll meet someone who has a story behind this. Um, Mueller's mushrooms, they're in Vista, Jill knows them. Um, you know, he sent a bottle of this lion's mane tincture, which I highly recommend to everyone on this call. Um, he will send it to you if you live in Alaska. Um, to a 93 year old woman who took it for four to six weeks. And then she started having better, she was started just having better cognitive function and memory and remembering things. and. There's stories like this all over. People start walking again. I mean, it's just like, it's crazy. So, um, so this is called Mueller's Mushrooms. Thanks, Joe. Um, and uh, it's powerful. It's really powerful medicine. What else does it do? So when you start getting better cognitive functioning, concentration, better focus. Um, you know, what also happens is that you, your anxiety and your depression can, can lessen because your brain is actually functioning correct, correctly. Um, so not only does it really help with cognitive functioning, but it also helps with relieving anxiety and depression. So think about taking some lion's mane. Um, you could take lion's mane. It actually goes really well with uh, like a cacao drink. If you made cacao and you put some lion's mane in it, or if, if you do drink coffee, think about having your morning coffee with lion's mane in it. Sorry, I have a helicopter going. And notifications. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. And um, it's it's a good, that coffee and, and cacao are actually a good, Anupan, which I said in the beginning of the conversation, Anupan is a transferring agent for the lion's mane, right? So we don't need Adderall and we don't need all these prescriptions. We can, we can use these magical mushrooms um, to help us focus and help us be present. Um, so that's just an idea for you guys. Um, also protects against stomach and intestinal ulcers, reduces heart disease, lowers blood sugar, reduces diabetic nerve pain, kills cancer, slows tumor growth. So you just have to think like when your brain's functioning better, other things are functioning better. So a lot of these things with the mushrooms, it's like, oh yeah, that's good for the gut. Okay, well, healthy gut biome means like better mind, right? And you'll, you're going to see that in the next couple of mushrooms. So not only, um, I'm gonna make sure I'm not missing anybody here that's trying to check in, no. Um, oops, before I get to that one. <laughs> um, not only is lion's mane really medicinal, but it tastes really good. So um, you can cook it up, make some tacos, make some veggie sautés, and it's really, really a yummy mushroom. And so you could also get the nutrients from just cooking it, right? Which would be cool. 
so yeah, I'm a big fan of mush lion's mane. And um, if anybody has any questions about this specific mushroom, you can feel free to ask. I want to make sure I respect everybody's time. Okay, what is this one? Does anybody know what this mushroom is? <laughs> and yes, it's growing out of a tarantula. <laughs> So this is cordyceps, cordyceps. Um, this is the one mushroom that grows straight out of bugs, like dead bugs, um, which tells you, or just shows you, I mean, if it's gonna do that, what do you think it's gonna do to your body? It's gonna repair dead stuff. It's gonna basically revitalize your body. Now, cordyceps, is actually really expensive and hard to get the actual real form of it. So we get kind of like an altered form of cordyceps because it comes from China. Um, it's hard to actually get real cordyceps or you do have to pay the, a good price for it. Um, but the one main thing is that I wanna speak to about cordyceps is that it gives you energy. That's the main thing about cordyceps. Um, cordyceps is great for, again, elderly people, older people who are getting older and they're starting to notice their body isn't working the same way as it was. And so they can take cordyceps to feel young again. It improves exercise and performance for children and older adults. So you see how I don't have cordyceps in for uh, like, middle-aged people um, because what it does is it really there's something about children and the elderly that's the same i don't know if you've noticed that when you get older elderly you start to act more like a child again <laughs> and so what the cordyceps does is it 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 really brings this youthfulness and this this, this vital energy into your body and your mind. So cordyceps is a really, really amazing mushroom. Um, and it's okay that you can't get the purest form of it, but what else does it do? Um, treats cancer, it has anti-tumor properties. I think I spelled tumor wrong there, sorry you guys. <laughs> Cordyceps may keep blood sugar levels within a healthy range by mimicking the action of insulin. That's crazy. So good for diabetics. Cordyceps may benefit heart health by helping prevent arrhythmias and lowering levels of triglycerides and bad LDHL cholesterol. So obesity, um, weight management, you can tell because a lot of times when you take like a weight management med like medicine, it gives you energy, right? So it, it kind of gets you into this fat burning thermogenic state. So cordyceps is that, right? It's going to give you lots of real energy. <laughs> okay, this is Mr. Chaga, which stands for conch. Kind of looks like a conch if you can see that. Um, this is one that you might miss, you know, if you were foraging, you, you would really have to look for this one because it kind of, this looks so much like a tree, you know, like kind of a dead part of a tree. Um, and then they have this really kind of like felty, like beautiful fungus here on the bottom. Um, and they kind of look like a conch. So chaga is actually the word for conch. Oops, that's turkey tail. So stress chaga is great for stress chronic stress specifically um so if you're finding yourself waking up feeling stressed for days on end chaga is a great mushroom to add into your supplement plan or nutrition plan um also boost your immune system all the mushrooms are great for immunity if you feel like you're getting sick or you feel like you're getting the coronavirus, which take mushrooms, get on a, like a high dose of an immunity blend of mushrooms. Take all these mushrooms we're talking about and get them all in one, 
you know, like one sort of medicine and take them when you're feeling ill because these mushrooms are going to regenerate and repair your body like no other. Um, prevents and fights cancer, lowers blood sugar, lowers cholesterol, improves gut health. Chaga is really good for gut health. Um, so stomach, liver, yellow coloring in TCM. So when I say the yellow coloring, we have this yellow coloring in the mushroom. Whenever you see a medicine with yellow in it here like this, that means that it's good for the stomach. So the coloring of the herbs and the mushrooms is important. Um, woo, I keep going all over the place here, sorry you guys. And then the black part of the conch, that's also really important, this part. And this has melanin in it, which is good for sleep, right? Sounds like melatonin. Also is good for the kidneys, which is also again, traditional Chinese medicine. So the coloring of the mushrooms is huge. Check the chat. Is anybody chatting around? No? Okay. Um, does anybody know what this one is? Nope. So yeah, this Jill, this is turkey tail. Um, in this one, you know, you can find, you can find up in the redwoods, you can find in Oregon, Rishi, you can find up there. Um, I saw a lot of this um, turkey tail when I was up in the redwoods the last time I was there. Um, because it's actually really thin, I wish I had a better picture where you could see it from the side. It's not like a super dense, thick mushroom. And that is actually like a thin, um, almost uh, pliable uh, fungus when you pluck it. Um, and it's really beautiful because I don't know if, if I wish I could show you guys a picture of what I have on my phone, but the, this white outer layer or this outer border of the mushroom, it kind of resembles, if you look at it, it kind of resembles like a cloud. And so you'll see in a lot of Chinese art, um, they have these beautiful clouds in their art. It's very like dainty and delicate in the old uh, Chinese art. And they say that comes from turkey tail because turkey tail grows all over China. So this is a really beautiful mushroom. Like just look at how amazing the, just the striations are here. I think it's a really special one. So I had to put it in here. So turkey tail's got like the most antioxidants. Um, here I say the cloud-like designs along the rim that resemble a lot of Chinese art. Um, this specific mushroom is really good for using in medical like conditions. So when I say that, um, chemo, radiation, surgery in general, if you're gonna need like a massive healing power, turkey tail is going to be something that's going to be great. If you know you're going into surgery or you know someone who has cancer and they're going to be going through major, you know, medical transformation. I mean, radiation, chemo, it's hard on the body. So this is something that you could take in conjunction with that that would make things easier or just, you know, give you a little more power when it comes to healing. Uh, not only do they create a healthy gut ba bacteria, but they fight fat, combat combat obesity. So, I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of these mushrooms really do help with weight management. They help um, keeping things, you know, metabolizing correctly. Um, in TCM, we we have something called a jing. Jing is, is like your essence, and it's kind of this, like similar to Ojas in Ayurveda. Um, so Jing is like your essence. It's your, it's, your, it's your aura, right? It's your, this shine that you walk around with. The people, you know, when you, people see you and your eyes are white and bright and your skin's glowing, that's your Jing. It's like, wow, you have this beautiful um, essence to you, right? And so turkey tail can really and it can help shine your your jing it can help really radiate your body so people can see that and you can feel that too you can feel this vitality in essence 
Um, so turkey tail's a good antioxidants, antioxidant and anti-ager. So you can kind of notice how a lot of these mushrooms have a lot of similar properties, right? But they, um, they're all a little bit different. Now I can do a whole nother course on 10 more different mushrooms, but this is just kind of like a basic, you know, a basic kind of roundabout. Um, okay, so I want to talk one more minute about taking mushrooms. I already said a little bit about you can, if you take a capsule, you can pour it on your tongue and just a little bit, just so you can get the pre-digestive effect going and then you can wash it down with water or use an anapan in Ayurveda we need to activate the tongue. I really like teas. I like drinking mushroom tea. Um, the only thing is it's kind of hard to find, um, you know, dried mushrooms everywhere. It might be not the easiest things I'm thinking for Deza, like you might want to you're going to just have to start growing all your mushrooms, Deza. Um, you can, you can buy the kits online from Etsy <laughs> and they're like $14 and then you just have the mushrooms growing and then they produce like three or four times. So, well, Deza, yeah, Danny, Deza's in Alaska, so she doesn't have access to all these cool farmers markets. Like, maybe you do, Deza, but um, at the farmers markets, it seems like a lot of the mushroom people are selling these now, which is cool. Etsy it is, yeah. No, okay, yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure, David, that they have them at the Hillcrest. I mean, Hillcrest is like the best farmer's market. In yeah, I haven't been there in a long time, but I can check it out for sure. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a good opportunity to go and just meet a cool person who does this kind of stuff, you know? Right. And then you just get so excited about having it in your house. Um, but teas are really nice. Um, I think that's a really good way to connect with plant and the, in this case the fungi. Fungi are different than plants, right? Fungi feed the plants um, and decompose the plants and decompose and regenerate. That's what they do. That's like the fungi, they are the, they're the missing part in the cycle. Yeah, so does it, you can either dry the tea, the, the, the fruiting bodies or not. Just like herbal tea, you can put fresh herbs and make a tea or not. Um, I was telling you guys, I really want to make this Rishi Gotu Cola blend of like for deep meditation. So I'll let you know how that goes when I do that. But, um, okay. Yeah. I want to, I want to speak to this if, since we have time. Okay. If we don't have the proper bacteria in our gut, we're not going to digest anything. Right. So that's important too. When we take supplements. And we talk, and we, if when we take supplements in general, when we eat anything in general, if our gut biome is not healthy and balanced, we're not really going to digest anything. So it is important to understand in that these mushrooms will heal your gut, but also maybe considering other things like fermented foods and just really getting your digestive gut biome in check. Um, you know, if you do homemade kombucha or homemade kraut or kimchi, or you take a digestive enzyme, I'm not sure, but there's lots of avenues and ways to get, make sure your gut's healthy in order to digest or process any kind of plant or medicine. Um, that's why they recommend when you do, uh, you know, other plant medicines that you go on a special diet or because they want your body needs to be a healthy vessel before we take medicines. Um, so just remember that. Um, another thing I want to speak to is cycle use. So when we take food and supplements, um, we don't need to take something for 365 days a year when it comes to herbs and plants and fungi. We use it when we need it. So for instance, David is, you know, might have high anxiety. It's like, okay, so 
notice when you have those times of high anxiety and then you do your herbal protocol and you do that for four to six weeks. But you don't need to take something 365 days a year. That's not what, that's why we call it medicine. It's used for treating what you have going on in the moment. Um, and that's why I get nervous when we have so much access to all these supplements at the health, health food store, because I think people are just taking them because it's a trend and they don't even know really why they're taking it. And they're like, yeah, I think I feel, I'm feeling better, <laughs> which is good. But like, um, you know, for instance, I bought this lion's mane uh, last week and I haven't used it yet. And I decided to use it today because I was feeling like I was getting a kind of one of those 3 p.m. tired slumps. And I was feeling kind of like disheveled a little bit. And I was like, wow, well, this is the perfect opportunity for me to take this lion's mane because it's going to help me with my cognitive functioning. And it did. So, um, you know, when it's just like being mindful of consumption in general. <laughs> Whole nother conversation. Um, let's see here. I have a few minutes. I want to be able to take questions, but I want to speak. The last thing I want to speak to is why mushrooms are so fucking cool. <laughs> and they it's about the environment. They, they literally regenerate our planet. Um, I don't know if any of you know about, I'm sure you've heard about these oil spills that occur in the ocean. So there's studies that you can take a bunch of oyster mushrooms. Deza, if you want to like start a revolution here, you can with your oyster mushrooms. The mycelium can actually break down hydrocarbons, which are in oil. And that can actually help clean up oil spills. Crazy that mushrooms could do that. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen, like, you can actually make, they can make, if we really wanted to, which this will never get passed. Maybe it will. I need to change my, I need to change my mindset about the climate crisis. But we could literally make to-go containers out of, mushrooms that 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 repli replicate styrofoam you know styrofoam's so bad for you know the environment it doesn't recycle it just like it ugh. so mushrooms can really you could make a house out of mushrooms to be honest it's very porous um there's just so much we could do if we just started growing mushrooms like massively everywhere <laughs> so that's why i'm like very like grow your own mushrooms um, they, they cleanse the soil in the water, right? So the mycelium, mycelium network, it's like an internet, it cleanses the soil. It, it, I got a bunch of mushroom compost for my, my raised beds um, at my house, and it literally just totally transformed my, the quality of my soil. Um, and I want a mushroom house. Yeah, right. So cool, huh? It's all, let's all live in a mushroom gnome village. <laughs> um, and so it's just crazy how this, it's like the, the missing link in the cycle, right? It just regenerates, repairs. And then also, also when you see an orange in the refrigerator and it's, it's got mold on it, well, mold is fungus. And what is it doing? It's breaking down the orange. It's breaking it down. It's, it's amazing. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I've seen boats like made out of mushrooms. That's really cool. Um, and lastly, mushrooms can be used in microforestry, which where they can kill sicknesses in other plants simply because they live off the bacteria that makes other plants sick. So they can actually cure diseases and be natural doctors in the environment. So when trees get some sort of disease or some sort of virus, um, they can go in there and just start repairing and be, the, be nature's doctor. It's so cool. And so if it can do that in the environment, in the outs external world, what do you think these things can do in your body? It's really 
they're really powerful. So, um, yeah, this has just been something that I've been feeling really, really loving, uh, researching and uh, connecting to Ayurveda and feeling like I could really um, inspire people to start using mushrooms and growing their own mushrooms and really incorporating them into the environment um, to make a really big, massive change. And we can do that. We can um, with just small steps, right? Um, so I hope this inspired you all. Um, I'd love to open up the call with a few questions. We have a little bit of time. If you have, I have a quick question. How do you feel about taking the mushrooms um, outside of the Ayurveda data, uh, diet, if not currently on the diet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. So you're saying like, since you can't find mushrooms in Vedic texts or like if they, uh, an Ayurvedic practitioner, traditional Ayurvedic practitioner wouldn't prescribe you mushrooms because it's not 100% Ayurvedic. Um, no, just um, using them in my current diet that is not Ayurveda. Just, yeah, jumping no. right, just jumping right into it. I think that, yeah, no, I think that's great. That's a, yeah. that's that's the thing about mushrooms is it doesn't matter yeah um but if you are someone who follows a hundred percent ayurvedic lifestyle and diet then maybe one would be you know um they might be apprehensive to start using mushrooms because they're rajasic in nature and in ayurveda we strive to live a sattvic lifestyle we, we strive to live, we have these things called the gunas in Ayurveda, where it's sattvic, rajas, and tamasic. And in Ayurveda, we strive to live a sattvic life, which is this pure light, um, you know, lotus blossoming out of the heart um, yes. life. And we don't want to add too many rajasic and tamasic things to our bodies. Right, okay. So um, that is where I've, you know, really come out of my shell as in my practice is that I do incorporate mushrooms. I think they're very important. So you can burn down the, you know, burn down the constructive walls around that science and do what you want to do. So um, does that answer your question? It does. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Um, what do I need to share with you guys? Uh, you want the information about the SOMA, the TCM and Ayurvedic practitioners, anything else? The kits, do you want me to share with you the kits that you can get on Etsy? Yeah. Because yeah. um, the, I've noticed that the one there on Etsy, they have uh, some different ones that I haven't seen at the farm. Um, I haven't I tried the Mueller's mushrooms myself. Yeah, try Mueller's, um, he's down. Okay, the pract, yeah, the, I got that, Jill. Um, practitioners in the podcast info. Um, yeah, Mueller's is actually, his warehouse is in Alpine, uh, which is closer to you maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, but he, he, I'm sure he's maybe at Hillcrest. I don't know, I haven't, I didn't ask him that, but um, he should be eventually. There maybe there's somebody else there that's doing it. I'm sure there, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Um, Could you share information on how to properly make the teas and whatnot? Just I don't know if um, like you put it in and then boil it, or do you put the mushrooms in after the water is boiled? Like that, like the specifics. Yeah, I'll um. I'll send you guys some some mushroom tea recipes, and I'll do like uh, I'll do a few of the different kinds. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Perfect. Um, beautiful. Lastly, I just want to point out that um, I do do so much more work other than this. <laughs> um, I am an Ayurvedic practitioner, obviously, and I have clients. Two of them are on here, which I'm so excited. 
um, Deza and Jill, and I have room for two more um, in the Ayurvedic Life Mastery Program. And yeah, we basically go through a total health transformation. Um, and then we start working on purpose and life and living environmentally and learning more about these medicines and doing some kind of some deep purpose work to get to where you truly want to be. So that is always open for more friends to become part of that journey. It's called the Ayurvedic Life Mastery Program. And you can reach out to me um, individually or after this if you're if you want to learn more about that um yes did you just write that jill <laughs> no you wrote that yeah, you yeah because Des Des said it's an incredible journey i couldn't recommend it more so oh, um yeah say guys, yes I, I agree. yeah thank you so much yeah um it's been it's been fun learn getting to know you ladies and getting to know some other folks that have been in the program and just really nip it in the butt with your healthcare routine and then really stepping into what you truly desire and um, using an environmental aspect. Yeah. So thank you, ladies. Do you mind, Jenny? Do you mind if I like really quick um, just speak to David? I don't yeah, mind. About anxiety. Just, um, yeah, yeah a, like a year and a half ago, I like hit a bout of like crippling anxiety and, and I've always like dealt with it. It kind of runs in my family and just personally. And I did do um, a psilocybin in December that kind of did, was a reset, but also the, the tinctures, like taking those has been really incredible um, mm -hmm. in managing my anxiety levels. So um, I know you're looking for that info, but I just wanted to like kind of put an exclamation on, he's that, that's, he, cre <laughs> he grows them locally. He's a mycologist and um, like, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to like plug in that, it's super cool and it's local. And um, so I really recommend kind of. Uh, thank you, no, I appreciate it. I am The one that I'm... works for you, but. Yeah, I've been looking for things, so. Good, good. And, yeah. Go ahead. And, and on Facebook, there's a, there's a group depression and microdosing. There's also people that deal with anxiety and it's a super supportive and like they're kind of their, um, what they take because there's like three days on, three days off. There's different people that take um, different kind of protocols for that. And it's just okay. a super supportive group. So you might kind of look there if you need some support. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Yeah. Would you guys be interested in a microdosing uh, workshop? Do you know what microdosing is, uh, David? Um, I guess not. Um, I would just like assume um, a, sort of like a three day on, like you were mentioning. Yeah, um, you can microdose anything. But when we say microdosing, we're talking specifically to magic mushrooms, to psilocybin. Oh, okay. So obviously we don't, you don't sell that. That's not around right. at the farmer's market. Um, <laughs> we have to figure out how to find that. Um, but there's a, you know, there's a technique to it. And Jill's right. You do, takes very small amounts of it for certain periods of time. And it does regenerate and rewire the brain. And oh, yeah. really has... Again, so much research um, as to how people have really gotten out of depressive states and anxious times in their life and really oh. turned around, really, really turned around. I've seen a lot of really amazing people just totally shift their, shift their whole path with that. Yeah. So, no, I think I do need that. So thanks for the info. This is stuff I didn't know. Yeah. So great. Okay, you guys. Um, is there anything else I want to say? I'm going to send this email and also recording to everybody listening who didn't, didn't get to jump on today. Oh no, we have somebody randomly coming in at the end. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Maybe she got on at the wrong time. So yeah, anything else you guys? Can I answer any other questions? No? 
Okay, stay, oh, one thing, I wanna stay tuned, stay, keep you guys in the loop. Um, I'm hosting a, a spirituality and sustainability interview series with permaculturists, mycologists, Ayurvedic practitioners, all sorts of really cool speakers, and that's gonna be launching on November 8th. So I'll be sending out info on that, and it's gonna, we're gonna have conversations like this um, and more. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and keep in touch. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Be in touch. Bye.